Welcome back. Now, you all know that life cycle costing is a very easy topic. The only formula that you have to learn is what is life cycle cost per unit? That is the total life cycle cost divided by total number of units. So most of the questions are quite straightforward and easy. So today we will take up certain tricky questions. It's not very difficult, but you know, in that exam pressure, you'll be thinking, oh my God, how to do this problem. So let's catch hold of some tricky questions on life cycle costing. Question number one, a wind station can generate 1,750 gigawatts of electricity per annum. Gigawatts of electricity. Let's simplify it. It's nothing but number of units. So a wind station can generate 1,750 units per annum. So that is easily relatable. Instead of telling gigawatts of electricity, we will say number of units. It has a life cycle cost of $55,000 per unit and an average operating cost of $40,000 per unit over its 20-year life. So the lifespan is 20 years. If the company sets a price to earn an operating margin of 40% over the life of a wind station, what will be the total lifetime profit per station to the nearest million dollars? So we are supposed to find out the lifetime profit. And what has been said, they want to make an operating margin of 40%. Please note the term, it is margin and not markup. Margin is always calculated on selling price. Markup, as you know, it's calculated on cost price. So whenever you hear the term margin, please write the mathematical relationship between the cost, the margin and the selling price. Now, selling price always equated to 100. If the selling price is $100, then what is the margin? It's 40%. Okay, 40% 40 of 100. So it is $40 because the selling price has been assumed to be $100. And what is the cost? Cost is always selling price minus margin. So it is 100 minus 40 or $60. So this is the mathematical relationship between the cost, the margin, and the selling price. Now, what has been stated, we need an operating margin of 40%. So since they have said the word operating margin, should we take the operating cost or should we take the life cycle cost? The cost that has to be taken is the operating cost of $40,000 because it specifically stated that it is the operating margin that is 40%. So against cost, we will write the operating cost of $40,000. Now listen carefully. If the cost is $60, the margin is $40. So if the cost is $40,000, then what is the margin? It is $40,000 divided by 60 into 40. So the margin works out to $26,667. So what is the selling price? Selling price is always cost plus margin. So it is 40,000 plus 26,667, giving a selling price of 66,667. So in the question, whenever margin is mentioned, always equate the selling price to $100. And the margin, as you know, it's calculated on selling price. When you write this mathematical relationship, you will not make a mistake in the calculations. So that is why I always tell to my students to write the relationship between the cost, the margin and the selling price. So now we have got the selling price as 66,667. Now we know to calculate the profit. What is the profit per unit? Profit per unit is equal to selling price minus, minus what? Minus, is it operating cost or is it life cycle cost? Here you have to take the life cycle cost because it's life cycle costing. So minus the life cycle cost and do not take the operating cost. Okay. So now we know that the selling price is 66,667. That's coming from here. And the life cycle cost, we know it's $55,000. So what is the profit per unit? Profit per unit is 66,667 minus 55,000 giving an amount of 11,667. So per unit, we are making a profit of 11,667. So what is the lifetime profit? 
how many units are we manufacturing in total? We are manufacturing 1,750 units per annum. And how many years? It's for 20 years. So what is the total lifetime profit? Lifetime profit is equal to 11,667 units that's coming from here multiplied by 1,750 units that's coming from here multiplied by 20 years that's coming from here. So the final lifetime profit will be $408 million. So the right answer is option B. Now moving to the second MCQ, what are the benefits of life cycle costing? Facilitates designing out of cost at the product development stage. This we saw in the previous video is a benefit of life cycle costing. Any doubts, I request the students to refer to the explainer video. It can encourage better control of operating cost over the life cycle. Yes, this is a benefit of life cycle costing because the accumulated costs are getting compared with the life cycle budgeted cost, which means that there is better cost control. The third statement, it gives a better understanding of the causes of overhead cost. Causes of overhead cost. That is definitely dealt with by actual activity-based costing, ABC, wherein you have the cost pools and the cost drivers, which throws light on the exact causes of the overhead. So life cycle costing does not give a better understanding of the causes of overhead costs. That is something which is dealt with by ABC. So this is not a benefit of life cycle costing. Fourth statement, it provides useful data for short-term decision-making. Short-term decision-making, what principles do we use? It is the relevant costing techniques that we use for short-term decision-making. Life cycle costing is always about the long-term. So statement four is also not a benefit of life cycle costing. So the two benefits of life cycle costing are just statement one and statement two. So the right answer is option B.